minutes, you can start the clock. Do, do I do a countdown first? No, it's okay. We're good. Okay. All right. Well, good evening to, to, you, to all of you sports fans and uh, to good morning to our viewers in uh, Toronto. If there are any, uh, anybody's watching us. Um, tonight is a very special episode and um, Brian and I are very much honored and humbled to have with us the only basketball fan to be inducted into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. Uh, he's, he's been a Toronto Raptors fan since 1995, since the team started. He's a super fan. He's never missed a game. And uh, uh, the, I guess COVID doesn't count. Um, he's never he missed, missed a game until COVID. So um, with us tonight, uh, actually, this man doesn't need any introduction. Um, You're freezing. Yep. Yep. Right. Yep. And um, helping helping me out um, tonight is my co-host Brian Yalo. Yes. Uh, good evening to everybody. We're, I'm really honored, Vince. Thank you for uh, uh, inviting. Actually, it's ironic because I just wrote about uh, Sir Nab a couple of weeks ago, and now I'm talking to him. <laughs> so I, it means I'm going to write another thing, and it's going to be exclusive. Thank you so much, and it's a pleasure to meet you, Sir Nab. Thank you very much for having me on, and hello to all the viewers in Philippines. All right. Um, well, I want to ask you first, Nab, before, before we go into... How, uh, how you migrated to Toronto. I want to ask you, because I'm not sure if, if you watched, um, if you're watching these playoffs, um, there have been uh, a few incidents with fans. I want to get your thoughts on this, being a super fan. What, what, what do you think of, 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 what, of what just happened uh, with incidents with, with, with fans? Well, you know, you're talking about those ugly incidents where the fans did something <clears throat> which they're not supposed to do. You know, yes, they're supposed to cheer for their team, but they're not supposed to be disrespectful to the players. And in New York, they did it to a very amazing young guy, very good human being, uh, Trey Young. And mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, and in, uh, uh, in, I think it was in uh, Philadelphia, Philadelphia that they did it, they, they did it uh, to uh, Westbrook, you know. And, you know, Yes, this is not right. This is not going to be accepted by NBA and the Philadelphia ownership group and the New York ownership group. This is not, this is not needed in the arenas. You know, you showed respect. Yes, you cheer on your team. I do that all the time. I cheer the most. <clears throat> and I respectfully pick on everybody, the opposing team. Doesn't matter how great they are. Uh, Kobe Bryant, Kevin Gardner, all those guys, Shaq O'Neal, I have picked on those guys. But don't, don't be disrespectful, you know? Yes, for 48 minutes, you know, we are competing with each other. <coughs> we are competing with each other. But that doesn't mean start uh, throwing the things on them or spitting on them. Uh-uh, that's not, not needed in our game of basketball or any other game. And it shouldn't be tolerated. And I think NBA will come up with some uh, sharp rules on that very quickly. All right. Uh, my first question for you, the well, second question for you, Nav, is you migrated to Toronto in 1984, and uh, you're a mechanical engineer, but you started out as a car salesman, and you sold 127 cars in three months. And that is, that is impressive. What at that time, what was working for you? Well, you know what? What was working for me very, uh, Vince, the very first day when I started my job as a car salesman, I had uh, about uh, 10 white people there, the other salespeople. And as I entered the showroom, they started making fun of me. They would start joking about my color, about my turban. They started calling me towel head. 
uh, Dapper Head and all those names, you know. And on that day, I didn't argue with them. I just took a deep breath, prayed to my almighty, and I decided that I have to be much better than good if I want to survive in that environment. And I went out and I sold 127 cars in three months. It was a record at that time. It still is a record today. And, you know, when you treat people like uh, you want to be treated yourself, that's what happens, success comes. And uh, that's what I did. There was no rocket science in selling the car. Basically, you treat people like you want to be treated yourself. All right. Brian, your turn. All right. I would like to ask uh, Sir Nav more about the Toronto Raptors. So how are things there? I mean, well, you got that first championship and then the, the last couple of years have not been that uh, kind to you. So could you give us your assessment on what happened? Of course. You know, after you win, the after you're on the top of the world, you know, I mean, it's very hard to keep up there. You know, it's very hard because everybody down is trying to pull you down, pull you down, yes. you know. It's not easy. Even in our human life, you know, people pull you down, you know. But anyway, they say it's very, it's good to be on the top, but it's very hard to stay on the top. And that's what happened to us. We won the championship in 2019 uh, uh, in spite of being the underdogs. And uh, we unseated uh, Golden State, which was a dynasty. And, uh, you know, but the last two years have been tough with the players going away. And then this year, I more or less, I would say it was a disappointing year. But, you know, when you are playing 3,000 miles away and then half of your team is affected by COVID, you only have six players dressed up. It's very difficult. And also, one more important thing that you are not playing in front of your fans. And the Raptor teams has the best fans in the league. And they feed off. They feed off the energy from the fans. And they didn't have that. But let me tell you one thing. This coming year, this season, we are coming back in October. We are going to be hopefully playing in our arena. Our team is going to be playing in front of their fans. And we are going to be roaring back in the top of Eastern Conference. All right. <laughs> yes. Okay. I was, I, I've, been, I've been writing a lot about the Toronto Raptors. I mean, um, what's the status of, of uh, Masai Uhiri? Is he coming back? Is he resigning? Well, let me tell you, I, I, I'm hoping and I'm, I think he will be back. But, uh, you know, this is basketball. It's a business at the end of the day, you know. I used to be very emotional about the trades and all those when I was in, in my initial years. But then I understood, you know, that this is a business and I sort of got used to it. And I'm going to be ready. You know, you're going to ask me, is Kyle Laurie going to be back also? Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, let me ask you, let me tell you. Whosoever comes back in October, I'm ready to cheer on that team. And we win as a team. We don't win as an individual. But I would love Masai and Kyle Laurie both to come back because they are the part of our winning culture here in Toronto. Actually, I was going to ask about Kyle. You already answered it. <laughs> okay. okay, Vince, back to you. All right, Nav. Um, we've, there have been a lot of players who've worn the Raptors uniform ever since, since 1995. Um, uh, who among the former players have you had, or do you have a uh, uh, relationship or a friendship with? With most of them, and uh, especially yeah. with uh, Damon Stolomeyer, with mm. uh, uh, you know, with uh, uh, Antonio Davis, uh, <laughs> Elvin Williams. I, I mean, I can name on and on and Mo Peterson, but uh, Vince Carter. He's yeah. my closest. He's my family. And uh, so, you know, once a Raptors, they become a family to me. And once a Raptor, always a Raptor. Okay. And um, all right. Can you walk us, walk us through the, the day that um, you got the call that you were going to be inducted into, into the Hall of Fame? What was your initial reaction? What, what, um, what was your, what was, what were you, what was the, what were the first things you said to yourself when, when you got the call? Well, let me tell you, my manager is the one who informed me February the 10th, 2020. And he mentioned to me that now 
you're going to be in the Hall of Fame. You're going to be honored in the Hall of Fame in the Super Fan Gallery. And I said, yeah, 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 sure. I thought he was making fun of me. He was trying to pull my uh, legs and all that. But no, you know, this thing was going to happen last September. It was going to, the, the, the ceremony was going to happen. But it was postponed because of COVID. And uh, it happened now on March, May the 15th. And I tell you, it's a disbelief as a fan. You know, as a fan, you can only dream to be that your team wins a championship mm -hmm. and you are a part of that championship team and you are a part of that big parade and celebration. But dream that you're going to be the grand marshal of the parade. I mean, I was blessed to be the grand marshal of the biggest sports parade in the on this planet. And then on October 22nd, 2019, another shock came to me, which was Getting the player's ring. It's the same mm -hmm. ring. Yes, it's worth $80,000, but it's the same ring which Kawhi and Laurie and Ibaka and Gasol, everybody received. That was a shock, you know. But uh, the ownership group and Messiah, they decided that they want to give me because they, they value me as much as the players, which is kind of them. Kudos to the Raptors organization. And then another thing happens, which is, May the 15th, you go into a gallery in the, hall, in the best building of basketball, Basketball Hall of Fame in Springfield. And here you do the ribbon cutting and they show you your gallery. And here it is your jersey of the Superfan jersey. Then you have your own chair, A12, sitting there in the gallery. You have your basketball. You have the replica of this ring there. And then you have the turban there, the same turban, same color, white with the red band, which I used during my championship run against Golden State. I mean, for a Sikh, the ultimate. And I'm pinching myself to see that this is happening. And next to my gallery is a, is a monitor showing 10 minutes of my videos, my highlights of basketball. And then I moved 10 feet away, a few feet away, and there is a Kobe Bryant's gallery. I mean, where can somebody dream that? So this is God is good. I got blessed. And I tell you, I'm taking <laughs> not just the Raptors fans. I'm taking all the basketball fans around the world with me into that gallery. This is time. Vince, you okay? Yeah. Um, no, the the, yeah. no, the the feed hung hung momentarily. Anyway, okay. My next question, Nab, is um, which was did you did you get emotional when uh, when the Raptors won it all? Of course, there was the finally. Uh, I mean, <laughs> finally, I was stand, I was behind the I was on the court side behind. Uh, uh, the Golden State bench, and mm -hmm. when we won it, you know, I mean, <laughs> dream come true for him. Man. And I remember, you know, Steve uh, Steve Kerr, the head coach of the Golden State, coming and giving me. He was the first one to give me the hug and congratulate me, and said, "Man, we lost, but I'm happy that you guys were, you won. But I'm happy because for you, because for 25 years I've been seeing you watching the game at your seats." And I'm so happy for you. And then all the Golden State players, Damon Green, Steph Curry, all those guys gave me so much love. I tell you, I mean, I'm pinching myself at that time also. And God is very good that my, in my, they gave me a journey like this. I mean, because like somebody was telling me on the ESPN the other day, there are billion to one chance that somebody can be on the court side of the championship mm -hmm. and then the grand marshal and then get the championship ring and then get the Hall of Fame ring. It's just, you know, it's not dreamable. It is, uh, it's not dreamable. Okay, before I, before I turn you over and have to back to Brian, do you also have um, relationships with opposing players, not just with former Raptors players, but players, you know, your Raptors play, uh, played against all of them. Shaq O'Neal, I can say, is a friend of mine. Uh, your uh, uh, Chris Weber, your uh, all the players. You know, you take the name Tim Duncan, Tony Parker, 
you know, uh, Iverson. You can take the names and LeBron James. You know, LeBron James. Uh, uh, you know, all these guys, the big time guys, uh, are. Uh, I can say they are the friends of mine, and I can truly tell you that everybody knows that for 48 minutes I pick on them. I do whatever I have to say and do, throw the towel, blow the horn, whatever I have to do. But before 48 minutes, before the game and after the game, we are brothers and we break the bread together. And we do. That's a really a, I'm telling you that we break the bread together and doesn't matter what team they represent. So I'm really blessed to be having a lot of friends in the NBA, not just the players, but the coaches and the referees and everybody. Oh, now he's out. Okay. I guess it's my turn. <laughs> okay. I, I'm just curious. You got that rare um, ring from the Hall of Fame. Okay. So, and, and I, yeah, that's it. That's the one. That's the one. And based on what I read already about you, is that you, you have a lot of collections. Um, do you feel that you already have everything a fan would love, especially uh, on your end for the Toronto Raptors? I have more than a fan can dream. Mm -hmm. I have more than in my life than I can, uh, more than I deserve. Mm -hmm. But as a human being, I'm greedy and I would like my Canadian team now to win a medal in uh, Japan. Olympics. Olympics. Yes. Because we haven't done that. And now uh, and I'm the ambassador, you know that, for a mm -hmm. global ambassador for Canada basketball also. So I'm hoping that all my young boys, my kids, like RJ Barrett, Wiggins, mm -hmm. uh, Birch, all these guys, you know, uh, Corey Joseph, Tristan Thompson, all these guys, they get together because we have a, we have a good team. We have a good young uh, talent. Yeah. And uh, I believe that we are going to be uh, right up there in the Olympics if we get there. Okay. So as a super fan, I'm just curious. <clears throat> Excuse me. Here in the Philippines, you have a lot of those super fans. So they're really passionate and they sometimes they lose control of themselves. Have you ever experienced that during games? You know, I'm a very controlled and disciplined guy. And a lot of times people think that I'm drunk, but you know what? I'm not, I never drink. I, you know, I have a, I, 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 I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't womanize, I only raptorize. So, you know, I'm a, sometimes even Kevin Garnett will tell the referee, oh, he's drunk, he's trying to do this, he's trying to do that. But you know what? A referee knows that I don't drink. And mm -hmm. I always, I never, I know my rules and regulation, and I never go cross them. NBA knows that. Everybody knows that, that I don't cross my boundaries. I do everything respectfully. And the players know. The mm -hmm. coaches know. You know, I can argue with some coaches also. I have some stories that where I argued with the coaches on the opposing bench. But mm -hmm. you know what? It's all in a respectful way. True. True. So I'm just wondering, I mean, wasn't never, never a time that a, a player got into you or tried to get you into trouble or something like that? You never had Not that Not really. I, I wouldn't say that. Yes, things have happened. You know, mm -hmm. a couple of things have happened. When Barclay was young, he was playing. Mm -hmm. He would be get upset and he would do some things. And there were a couple of other times an incident happened. But, you know, it's all in the in the game. The mm. players are very intense. And I'm sitting right on the front third. And I say something. But, but everybody knows. The referees know that I don't use any foul language. Mm. I don't drink. And I love all the ballers. Mm -hmm. They know that. That mm -hmm. even if they're on the opposing team, I love them. It's only mm. for the 48 minutes I'm cheering on my team. Mm. That's what it is. And that's why Giannis, a Greek, yeah. the freak, last mm -hmm. year tweeted out, I don't know if you know, he yeah. tweeted that it's uh, of all the fans on the 30 teams, hardest to play is against the super fan because True. he picks on me so many times. And he picked, he missed a few free throws during the third game of the Milwaukee, the series between Milwaukee and Raptors in 2019. And I think he still remembers that. <laughs> okay. Here in the Philippines, that happens with one team. I don't know if you've heard of it, uh, Hinebra. That's uh, that's the worst team you would play here in in Oh, well, really? Side. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm, I'm hoping I'm hoping that one day I come to Philippines and watch the basketball there because 
you guys are very passionate about this game. Yes. Even in Toronto, even in Toronto, I get approached by so many young people, Filipinos, you know, and they come and they will they will take a picture with me and talk basketball. You are so much passionate about this game. Believe me, if you I get love, that. I, 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 I love that. And one day I hope that I can uh, come to uh, uh, Philippines with uh, maybe some players or somebody during a, some exhibition game there and uh, enjoy it. I would recommend if uh, if you if they're still around Hinebra, Vince will agree with me. He's back. <laughs> okay. All right, Vince. All right, Mav. Um, speaking of speaking of going to other countries, you're you're also an ambassador of World Vision, and um, you have projects of uh, building um, hundreds and hundreds of washrooms in in your native India. Um, are you focused on India? Are you also planning to go to other countries and um, uh, continuing that project? Well, let me tell you something. I am I'm, 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 I'm humbled and proud to let you know that I'm the global ambassador for a Christian organization, World Vision. And I'm, I'm, I'm the only one who is a non-Christian and a global ambassador because I believe in what World Vision does and especially inspiring the girls, giving them the opportunity to continue their education because there is a lot of play schools where there's no washroom for the girls, you know, and the girls drop out at the age of 11 when their period starts, they can't go to school. So we are trying to stop that. We are trying to have them continue their education and World Vision being the one of the biggest Christian organization, they tell me that which country or where is the need at that time. And I follow their instructions and advice, and that's where I find it. All right. Um, how, okay. Um, that what? Because as a super fan, you know, you all, you also have perks. You know, you have uh, you know there are advantages. And um, remember that um, that uh, in two thousand one. Uh, your Raptors almost made it to the finals had Vince Carter knocked down that uh, jump shot in Philadelphia. Yeah. Um, were you heartbroken when, uh, when, the, when the shot didn't uh, go in? Everybody was uh, you know, uh, heartbroken at that time. And, uh, but you know what? That happened and we move on after that. But yes, it was an amazing season for us at that time and we could have been... Uh, in the finals if that shot would swing. Okay, um, so Nav, um, how, I mean, you, from the time you moved to, you migrated to Toronto, can you, if you can, can you pretty much summarize your journey from, from India to Toronto, uh, car salesman, um, Toronto super fan purchasing the first season ticket, uh, Toronto Raptors season ticket, and then watching all the games, the playoff wins and losses, um, and then winning the title finally two years ago, and then um, and then getting inducted into the Hall of Fame. Can you summarize all of all of this, this whole journey in in a few sentences? I guess, well, I'll just say. It's miracles and God's blessing. But only thing I did was all around my journey, even with the speed bumps I went through, people calling me names and everything, making fun of my turban and my beard and all those things, I tell you that I was a blessed guy. God was, uh, the Lord was looking at me and I did treat people like I wanted to be treated myself. When people went low, I went high and uh, Almighty really blessed me. I'm a really a blessed person because of Almighty and the prayers of a lot of people around me. Do you, Nav, do you still have family back in New Delhi? Yes, I have some family, a few of them, not uh, maybe the direct, but my wife's side, I have some family and my side, I have four cousins and all that. They are still in India. And they are all right. Well, the last three, four weeks ago, when the COVID was uh, at, uh, at the top there, I had some family in the ICU 
we lost one nephew to covid but but overall now we are back getting back to normal there but the time things are very very tough there all right uh, let me turn you over to brian all right, thanks, Vince. Um, actually, I have a question here. Shout out to 3B Hoops, Adrian Magnai. Um, um, Sir Nav, he, he was asking about the time of Vince Carter when uh, he was still uh, playing. I mean, this was the peak of his career. Um, is it fair to say that he was considered the Michael Jordan of his time? Um, it's <laughs> something know, that can, uh, Canadian I players mean, were saying. There was, a, there was a glimpse of him, uh, you know, in some of his things. It was a glimpse, but I think Michael Jordan, and I love Vince Carter. I mean, I think if <coughs> any jersey has to be retired first in Toronto, it has to be Vince. If there is a first statue to be built in Toronto, it has to be Vince. Because he helped Canada, not just basketball-wise. But look at the camps he used to do. Every player, and I know all the big players, I've never seen a player, at least in Canada, in any sports, mm -hmm. who spends, when the season is over, he spends one week with the, with the young kids, teaching them basketball. Usually the players, next flight they take and they go to states in their home, home state. But this guy, Vince Carter, kudos and salute to him. He stayed every year here and taught those boys the basketball in their camps. And that's the reason today we have over 20 Canadians playing in the NBA at a, at a great height. You know, like, uh, like I said, Wiggins, Jamal Murray, uh, Tristan Thompson, Corey Joseph, Kelly. I can name, you know, there are 20 of them, more than 20. Thanks to Wins for that. Kudos to Wins for that. And uh, so I think Wins did in Toronto so many amazing things other than basketball. And he's one guy I want to let you know. I must have in the time he spent in Toronto, I must have taken 3,000 autographs and pictures for the kids, which he gladly signed all the time. To me, a greatness of a player comes when he's available to the young kids. Mm -hmm. You know, because God has given them this talent. Yes, they have worked hard at it. But at the end of the day, it's all about the Lord's blessings. And uh, they should be reaching out to the kids and be a good role model. So I think Vince has done a great. He's the greatest of the Canadian, any pep player who has come to uh, Toronto. But uh, Michael Jordan is Michael Jordan. MJ is MJ. And uh, I, I think he is the ultimate NBA anytime. And I think Vince will agree with me on that. Yeah, Vince, do you agree? <laughs> I think Vince will agree me on that. Yeah, he will. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, he will agree on that. This is a, you know, uh, even LeBron is so good. You know, LeBron is amazing. But you know what? MJ is MJ. And Aldrin is also adding that um, the, uh, the attendance of, in the Raptors is top 10 during the time of Vince. Uh, beating out the Lakers and the Celtics during that time. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm uh, assuming you were there. <laughs> I was course. there. Yes, yes, I was there. You know, I was there. Yes, I was there on every for every game, home game at the time. So I have witnessed a lot of things. So, so can you describe the atmosphere during those times? I mean, electric. when it, you have a Ele packed stadium. Electric, electric. I mean, it was like a. You know, uh, two and a half hours, you are in a different zone. You are, it's a different zone. You know, when you are there, you are in it, and you don't remember your wife, kids, or anything at home or anything. You are so glued to that particular action happening. And uh, Vince gave us some very good moment in his, uh, you know, uh, every game of his was saying, oh, what is he going to do next? Oh, what is he going to do next? You know, so it was amazing. Okay. So I'm going to dig into the Kyle Lowry, Lowry situation. I, I know you said oh, earlier that you're expecting him to come back, okay? But um, I, I've been also writing about him, and um, I wrote recently that he sold this mansion. Uh, uh, yeah, he yeah. Sold, yeah, yeah, he sold his house. Yeah, he yeah. sold his house. Yeah, and, and, uh, and that's okay because, you know, he was not using it for a year, and I guess he... Uh, and they moved to uh, America in the pandemic and they didn't know the pandemic is going to be 
But you know what? Doesn't matter if he signs back, he'll buy it again. So it's okay. He'll buy it again. Maybe he'll buy a bigger and better one now. Mm -hmm. So what's this? Um, well, there are rumors saying that he's going to the to the Miami Heat. Can you can well, you weigh in on that? Uh, you know, I don't know where he goes, but he is he has been a great Raptor, and I salute him. I thank him what he does in the on the court and inside the locker. He's a journal. I always call him Journal Laurie. And uh, I, I, I want him to come back. I, uh, I, but if he decides to go somewhere, I think it's his right to do that. We should respect that. And, uh, you know, we wish him all the best if he decides to leave. We wish him best. I'm, you know, I, I love his family. His kids are amazing. His wife is a friend of mine. She's amazing. And, uh, you know, but we wish them all the best, you know, if they decide to leave. Vince? Huh? Nav, I also read about you donating um, hot meals to frontliners over in Toronto. Um, how was that experience? And um, uh, is this something that you, you do uh, or you did or you're doing regularly now? Well, let me tell you, during COVID, when 15th of March, everything got closed and I didn't want to get stuck with my wife at home. I wanted to do be outside, you know, and uh, I bought a food truck and then I said, well, I'm going to distribute a few hundred uh, hot meals in the area, you know, to the frontline workers. Because frontline workers, I respect them a lot because they put their life for us in the front end. And uh, I, 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 but with God's grace, we were able to distribute 15,000 hot meals and that was a blessing. And I met so many nurses and the frontline workers. I tell you, it was an amazing feeling. I still have that truck. And I'm thinking that maybe during Christmas time or some other time, I might do it a few times again to the frontline workers and some other needy people. Do you, do you also follow the uh, national team? Uh, Canadian yes, national, the national team. Of course I do. And that's what I said that I hope that this time we are able to go to Japan. We have some uh, uh, rounds in Vancouver. We are going to be playing in June. And hopefully we win those because I think there's only one spot left for the Olympic uh, spot. And if we win that, we are there in Olympic. And I hope that we win a medal in Japan this year. So um, are there other sports you follow now aside from basketball? I tell you, no, and I cannot afford because as it is, my married life is on a thin ice, you know. I spend so much time on the basketball. And if I get following some other sports, I'm going to be divorced and a single guy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's the fact. I mean, I've missed my wife's, I've missed my wife's uh, wedding anniversary so many times. I have missed my, her birthday so many times. <laughs> I've missed some other events. And I tell you, I don't want to push it that I start watching the other sports and then get a divorce, you know, and I can't afford a divorce financially either. Okay, so I guess the uh, Blue Jays won't be, won't be, um, you, you won't be seen at any Blue Jays. Uh, no, game, no, no, no. I, I wish them, I support them. I support my hockey team. I support all my city teams, you know, but I just, can give them the blessings from the far away. I cannot go and watch uh, those because I, I cannot afford because I don't, uh, uh, I, I spent already a lot of time and money. I, I spent a lot of time and money on basketball. And um, how many every, um, every year or is it every season that you, you send kids to, to, to watch Raptors games? When, when did this start? They started in 1999-2000 season when we moved uh, to Air Canada Centre. And we did the first Besaki Day game there, we, uh, uh, which is our celebrating our New Year's. And I brought thousands and thousands of kids there. And we have continued doing that for the last 20 years, uh, depending on how many tickets are available uh, at that time. So we bring a lot of kids from everywhere to the game of basketball because I just want them to integrate with each other. And that's the purpose, to bring them together so that they understand why we are wearing turban, why they are wearing hijabs and all that. To me, 
you know, everybody is the same inside. 99.99%, we are all the same inside. Doesn't matter what national, nationality you have, what religion you have, what faith you have. Deep inside, we are all the same. And that's one of my purpose where I bring all the kids together. And I'm going to continue doing that. All right. Nav, you have the um, you have the Super Fan Foundation. You have the Nav Batya Foundation. Um, the Nav Batya Foundation builds basketball courts, and not just not just in Canada, but you you build courts all over the world, right? Yes. Well, that's what the plan is. We are building yeah. now. Next uh, couple of weeks, we are going to start building four courts in in uh, Malta, which is a very tough area here. And uh, so that, and that's to help the kids go away from the drugs, from the gangs, and spend their energy on the game of basketball. So that's what we do, and we continue doing that. We are blessed that we have been given the opportunity to do that through our Nabatia Super Fan Foundation. And do you do you do um, projects to? I mean, I'm I'm sure the Raptors have their own foundation, right? So. Yes. Have there been times where you've done projects with them? Well, we have donated money with them to them, to their foundation. We do that because, and also where we are building this basketball, we are asking the Raptors to have the program there because they have more uh, infrastructure in order to run the program. So they will be, we'll be working side by side with them. All right, Brian. Okay. So I'm going to ask uh, Nav a couple of, I'll give you a couple of names, players that play for Toronto. I'd like you to uh, give me your honest opinion on them and what is the best you remember of them. Okay. So I'll, the first one is Tracy McGrady. Um, amazing guy. He was young. <coughs> a very good. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Very good friend of mine. He regrets that he left Toronto because he feels that we would have won the championship at that particular time. A very talented kid, very matured. He has matured so much now. Very big family man and love his family and love him. Amazing guy. Yeah. Chris Bosch. <laughs> I just met him in the Hall of Fame because he's getting <laughs> inducted next year. Uh -huh. So CB4, CB4 is a a good friend of mine also, and a good, talented guy. Too bad that he got that blood uh, clot issues with him, and he could he had to stop basketball. Otherwise, I think he would be still playing and making contribution to the basketball in a higher level. Yeah. Demar Derozan, amazing, amazing, amazing human being, great player. I can call him as my little brother, his family, his wife, and used to sit next to me on all the home games. His kids used to sort of play on my lap all the time. And I tell you, I one of the unselfish player. And you know what? Kudos to him. I cried when he was traded. But I also told him that Coach Popovich is going to take his game to the next level. But amazing, amazing uh, human being and guy and family. I call him a family. And he was my neighbor also. He was very close to my house, you know. And, uh, you know, uh, I, I was very close with his, uh, I'm very close with his family, his wife and kids. Yeah. Funny you should <laughs> mention the trade. Kawhi Leonard. <laughs> Kawhi Leonard? Uh, who? Kawhi Leonard who? Uh, after Kawhi? Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi who? Kawhi who? Oh. oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, yeah, I, I, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm throwing a little shade there. All right, all right. Yeah. I understand. I got that. I got that. I got oh. that. I got that. Nav. Okay. <laughs> you know what? You know what? People always said, hey, Kawhi won the championship for us. I never believed. I said it loud and clear in 2019. It's not a player who wins a championship. It's a team which wins the championship. And look at if 
a player would have won the championship. LeBron didn't have to leave Cleveland mm -hmm. uh, and to go to Miami to uh, get the championship. It's a team thing. And look at where they are now. They might not be even making to the second round, you know. Mm -hmm. And I tell you one thing, he's not going to win a championship uh, anymore now. Raptors gave him a championship and San Antonio gave him a championship. But when you, it goes to your head that you are the guy, that you got the, you got the team the championship, that's when the trouble comes. And I think you can see that. I don't have to say anymore. Okay. <laughs> that's you. Okay. Yeah. Speaking of the, your champion team, here are two other names. Mark Gasol. Great human being, great player, and uh, a great contributor and a team player. Do you see him retiring soon? I mean, after the season or maybe another year? Maybe another year or so. That's it. He's not. He's playing very minimal minutes right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, he has a... Uh, he can do those three-point shooter all of a sudden. He comes off the bench and does that shot. And it goes one out of every three times, you know. And he's good, you know. I mean, he's a good human being. He's a good human being, good family. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, I appreciated his presence here. He he doesn't have I in him. He has V in him, you know. He's always as a team guy. Okay, I, I'm going to ask you something very touchy. Would you agree with uh, some people saying that Mark Gasol should be playing more than Andre Drummond for the Los Angeles Lakers? I think that can, yeah, that should be. But again, I think the coaches, you know, Jason Cade and uh, Frank Vogel, you know, I, both are my very good friends. Mm -hmm. And I think they are the coach, you know, so they have to, they know the talent what uh, Mark has and what Andre Drummond has. And I, I don't want to be a coach, you know, and I think they do the best decision. Andre Drummond is a good friend of mine also. You know, I mm -hmm. love him, you know, mm -hmm. and I love him when he was playing in uh, Detroit. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know what? I think uh, let the coaches decide, you know, that who should be where and all that, you know. I don't, uh, uh, you know, uh, I don't want to say anything about that. I think coaches know the best. All right. Okay, my last player is somebody who played, well, not really that long for Toronto during your championship run. Jeremy Lin. Amazing guy also. Amazing guy. And uh, I'm a good friend of mine again. I mean, and he was, it was good to have him in Toronto. Very intellectual guy. Very intellectual guy. So, you know, uh, I think he could have done a little bit better than what uh, uh, in Toronto. What We were expecting more out of him. But anyway, he won the championship here and that's good for him. Well, actually, I read somewhere that he doesn't feel that he's part of the team. Would you agree? He was not the part of the team? He, he doesn't deserve the ring. At, at know, first, at was, first. Well, anyway, if he was on the, on the roster, he gets the ring. And let, I, I don't want to be involved in that politics. It's mm -hmm. Messiah and the management has to decide. But he did get the ring, right? Yes. He was on yes, our roster. Did. So then, yeah, but they, you know, nobody, people can say whatever they say. That guy shouldn't deserve the ring. That, you know, Messiah made the decision and he, he was on the roster. So why shouldn't he get the ring? That's true. That's true. Yeah. So, yeah. But do you think he still has what it takes to make a return to the NBA? Uh, well, he has talent. I mean, he can. Mm -hmm. But uh, again, you know, I don't know what is in here with him because you have to have and I don't know inside I haven't talked to him in a couple of years now but uh, I, you know he had something they used to call him linsanity didn't they linsanity mm -hmm. just like linsanity they yeah, used to call just like insanity. yeah 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 linsanity so I hope that if he wants to come back he can show he will come back he'll get a he will get a there he's an intellectual player his IQ is very good before I turn it over back to Vince, there's a question again from Alden. Did you see Steph Curry during the time of Del Curry in the Raptors? Of course. That's he was kid. a little kid. And I tell you one thing. I'm going to share something with you. And uh, I remember he used to come a couple of hours before the game started. And uh, he used to take about 200 three-point shooters and uh, the other shots, you know. And one day when I was watching 
uh, you know, the, uh, I was allowed to go in the arena before the game. So I was watching him from the corner and I, sure, I saw him that his shots came down. <laughs> So every time now he talks to me something, uh, I tell him, I said, don't tell me, I, I've seen you without the, <laughs> without the shorts uh, when he was 10, 12 years old. No, ama amazing dad, Dell was amazing, very classy, elegant family. And he was one of the first ones to congratulate me when I won the championship, when we won the championship. All right. Okay, before uh, Vince, shout out lang to, Ch uh, to Chennai, oh. India. Many people out there watching us. Chennai, India. All right, Vince, all yours. Now, we have, um, uh, going back to, sorry, going back to Kawai, who um, had yeah, he stayed... Kawai, uh, let me tell you, Kawai is an uh, uh, amazing player, a good athlete. But, no, but, but let like me ask you. Thing. From a from a super fan's perspective, had he stayed with you guys, would you would you have won back to back? I think we had a good shot last year. Yes, not this year. Last year we had a very good shot with Ibaka and Gasol and everybody. If he would have come back, because our chemistry was there, you know, our coaching staff was the same, coach nurse, and you know, I think we would have done it. Even we were playing in the bubble, we would have done it. And he would have gotten another ring. When okay, when when did you uh, how should I say this? When did you when did you start to feel that um, the team uh, noticing you watching every game? When when did they start noticing you that you were you were watching every game uh, that you were there for every home game? When when did they start noticing? Started noticing, I think, in ninety seven and ninety eight. Because I was very loud, I was very animated, and that's when Isaiah Thomas, our president and general manager at the time, called me on the central court of Sky Dome where we used to play basketball and gave me that jersey, Super Fan 1, and I became the face of the Raptors. Very nice. Um, have you, okay, you've, you've watched every Raptors home game. Have you ever watched a Raptors road game? A lot of it. A lot of road games. I have watched and uh, I'm, I'm broke financially because of the reason. Because I spend more than I make. Because I go to the road games and all that. And I go to every playoff game on the road. All right. Brian? Okay. So, well, I know... Um, but by next season, Toronto is now trying to rebuild again. And uh, one position that's um, being mentioned as uh, a big void is the center position. Would you agree this is the only position that you, you need to improve on this offseason? Yes, we do. We do. Okay, I like so to see I like to see Jonas Valchunas come back. So do you think where, where would be the best option to get that from free agency or from the rookie draft? I don't know who's in the draft right now, but yeah. I would say if, if we can get a veteran, somebody like uh, Jonas Valchunas and all that, through a trade or through a free agency, I think that's what we have to do. And we missed we missed that free, uh, that particular spot, the five spot, the center spot, this year quite a bit. Yeah. Okay, so how about other positions? Do you see any, any improvements needed? I think we have young kids who can come and improve. I think Pascal is going to come amazing this year. I think you will see Chris Bouchard coming up good. He just needs to have some Indian food and uh, get some muscles done. And uh, so, you know, I think we are pretty good on the other. Fred Van Fleet is amazing, you know. So I think we are going to be okay. You know, as much people are concerned, I think in the end we are going to be very good. So, so with the NBA season get in the playoffs now, who do you think, who is your forecast? Well, not to be the champion, to be in the, the finals. Who do you see? Well, well, in the finals, I think I will take you four or five, four teams. I think Philadelphia could be there. I think uh, Brooklyn can be there. Milwaukee can be there. Milwaukee, Brooklyn, and uh, your uh, Philadelphia. It will be one of the three coming out of the East and then out of the West. You know, it could be Utah. It could be 
you know, you cannot write off Lakers mm -hmm. because there is a guy in the team, LeBron, who has a very big heart. I think those are the two teams which I think, uh, you know, you're going to see that they are coming out of it. I would have said Denver, but they don't have Jamal Murray right now. So mm -hmm. I think that is going to hurt them. But uh, I think those are the two teams. I think uh, Utah, Portland can be there, and then uh, Lakers. Yeah. Not the Clippers, huh? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't think Clippers are going to be uh, there. You know, I don't think so. But again, okay. it's the basketball. Yeah, you know, true. I wish them. All, I wish them all the best. All right, Vince. Nav, do you think sometimes, or uh, do you think? Sometimes Pascal Siakam gets unfairly criticized. Yeah, he does. But again, you know, I think uh, Pascal had some uh, issues this year, you know, and uh, he wasn't able to go. He's not in America, so his visa and all that, he couldn't join the team this last year, right, with the other people, other, other players. So he was uh, stuck in Toronto for a while. But I believe this year is going to be a different thing. And I think he'll come. People get criticized because... You know, people give their opinions and criticize somebody. You know, we in journal also go through all that all the time. Uh, but you know what? He'll come out, the, out of that and he's going to he's going to be an amazing player. He's going to be an all-star again very soon. And um, the, the, the car dealership that you that you worked for before, you ended up buying the car yes. dealership. Um, my follow-up question to that is, uh, did they treat you well? If, um, if no, was there a sense of satisfaction that you bought the car dealership? And if yes, if they treated you yes, how fulfilling was it? Well, to own the same dealership where you started working is a very fulfilling and a blessing. And I give the credit to the Almighty again for giving me that opportunity to be successful and to have those dealerships. And right now, with God's grace, I have three uh, three top Hyundai dealerships in the country. I have two Genesis top dealerships in the country. And I have 270 champions working with me in these ones. So I'm really blessed. Any plans of expanding your car dealerships outside of Toronto? No. I'm, you know, I'm uh, going to stay in Toronto itself. And... Uh, you know, my passion is right now in the charity work and uh, that uh, it's, uh, you know, all organized right now in Toronto. I'm, I just want to just stay in Toronto. I have the opportunities outside with the other brands also, but I'm not. I'm just loyal to Hyundai. I'm only a Raptors fan. And uh, I mean, I follow only basketball. And here, you know, I just uh, am a loyal person with my team and with my Hyundai team. And um, what, uh, what advice can you give to other aspiring super fans? Well, just keep on supporting your team. Everybody who is in the game supporting their team is a super fan, according to me. And, uh, you know, just enjoy. Enjoy yourself. You don't need to, uh, you know, be disrespectful to the other teams to just show that you are a super fan. Be respectful to the opposing team players and the coaches. And enjoy the sports because sports in the end is a unifier. It unites us. And that's what my mission in life is now. Just to unite everybody, to bring it together through the beautiful game of basketball. And that's it. And in all the games now that you've, uh, you've watched, you mentioned that uh, at home games, you're loud and animated and, and, uh, and passionate. Did the, do the opposing players notice this? Even the referees, do they notice this? Of course they do. When the referee comes and says, now calm down a little bit now, calm down. The, the opposing team is <laughs> complaining too much. And then I do, I do what the referee says because, you know, but no. So I know that uh, it, it is bothering when the people tweet, you know, Giannis, uh, Greek the freak, you know, Giannis is tweeting that I'm the toughest, toughest friend to play opposing you know so it's uh it's uh, you get the message you know i'm doing my job as a fan but i do it everything in a respectful way right brian actually i'm running out of questions 
<laughs> okay, so let's. Uh, I'm going to take the next interview now. Okay, hey, I, I, unless Vince has more. Well, I'm going to take the next one is from Mumbai now. Oh, okay. We are waiting for it, so I'm going to switch over to Mumbai now. Okay, Vince. Well, um, we're um, fortunately enough. We're we're about to we're about to end in a few minutes. Mm. Um, any any thoughts? Any final words for our viewers? Well, keep on loving this beautiful game, and uh, keep treating your other people like you want to be treated yourself, and be good to the needy people. If you see somebody down, pick them up, help them out without any condition. You will have more fun and satisfaction out of it. Nice, Brian. Well, I just like to thank uh, Sir Nabati. It was a pleasure talking to you. I, I learned a lot from you, and I'm thinking of a lot of things to write now because of okay. what you've been revealing me. And I, okay. I'm I'm very very grateful, and I'm hoping that one day you would be able to come here in the Philippines. And we would, I, I'm, I'm sure Vince and I would be more than happy to be with you and show you the Filipino brand of basketball. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. And also, Vince, thank you for having me here. I told you I will not pass this up. And to everybody, we hope you enjoyed our time with Sir Navbacha. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Good night. Good night. Okay, Vince. Well, I want to say, I want to first of all thank, um, uh, thank uh, Rin Rinko for um, making this possible for making Nav av available, um, and uh, you know, thank you to Nav. Uh, it's it's been an honor. Um, we are humbled by uh, your acceptance of our invitation. And on that note, another episode of Sports for All has ended. We'll have another episode tomorrow, uh, back to back. Tomorrow we will have the we got now. Pandemic Heroes, oh, yeah. that's Coach Noli, uh, Coach Louis Gonzalez, mm -hmm. Coach Noli Ayo, and Jelly Bulaong um, of, uh, of the MMA, of Mixed Martial Arts. So looking forward to that. Another interesting and uh, another interesting and fun conversation, hopefully tomorrow night. And uh, that is all for us, for me and Brian. Thank you for watching. See you. Uh, next next Saturday. So long. Night, everybody.